Hello, Assalamualaikum uh, and may peace be upon you all. Okay, this is the second video lecture uh, about log propositional logic. I'm going to continue about the entailment and derivation. So, we go back a bit, two slides before, which is about proof and theorem. Proof is actually uh, all the sequences of sentences that we can get uh, before uh, to prove that we have a conclusion while theorem is the goal right so we have look at the weather problem so you can go backtrack whether given to you is the conclusion the theorem that it is raining now so you have to find the proof which is from number four and five here right or if i give you the condition now it is hot and humid okay so you can find what is the conclusion or what is the theorem Okay, so from if given to you number 5, you can induce from number 4, you can say that it will rain. Okay, next. What is entailment and derivation in propositional logic? It's the other way around of saying about proof and theorem. Okay, what about entailment? Q is entailed by the knowledge base. If and only if the conclusion is true. Okay, so basically... We, this is the this is the case where we have the goal okay or the q and we want to know the all premises that relate to q in the knowledge base sometimes you have to trigger up to 10 rules before you can get into the theorem or to the goal so you want to know you want to you want to entail all the proof or the premise that relates to q all right derivation you derive the Q. Okay, you get the theorem. You get the conclusion. Okay, so you derive the Q from the knowledge base if there is a proof consisting of a sequence of valid inference steps. Okay, so you want to know all the possible conclusion. Okay, all the possible uh, um, conclusion which is the Q. Right. So, two important properties for inference, that is the soundness, okay, the logicness, uh, if knowledge base is entailed by Q, then knowledge base is derived by Q, okay? So, if Q is derived from a set of sentences in, K, in knowledge base, using a given set of rules of inference, then Q is entailed by the uh, knowledge base, okay? So, this is logic. Alright, if you can get the Q from a set of sentences, so that means the Q is entailed by the knowledge base. Okay, the second one is a completeness. Okay, Q is entailed by a set of sentences in knowledge base, then Q can be derived from the knowledge base. So, if you can derive Q from a set of uh, rules, and you can do the other way around, given to you is a Q, and you can entail all the uh, proof, all the premise that is related to the Q, so that means your knowledge base is complete. Okay, so what is the problem with the propositional logic? Okay, it is hard to identify the individuals. For example, we have Mary, age 3 years old. Okay, we cannot directly explain more of individual properties or relation between individuals. For example, Bill is tall, or Mary, age is 3, okay, or... Um, how do we say that uh, Ahmad is tall, Ali is tall, and Abu is tall. So all these three uh, have to have to get three variables. Okay, that is in propositional logic. So we cannot we cannot make one generalized uh, sentence. So the problems generalization patterns regularities cannot easily be represented okay then we have the uh, we, we uh, sorry uh, then uh, we have predicate logic okay who thus we have the first order logic okay which actually uh, solve the problem of generalization patterns and it adds variables but before we, go to, before we go to first order logic, okay, we have another representation which, which simplifies uh, the way sentences in proposition logic. Okay, 
So let's look at predicate logic. The example uh, of a sentence right in the propositional prof PL propositional logic. First is every person is mortal. Okay, the second sentence Ahmad is a person. The third one is Ahmad is mortal. So given this, okay, can we conclude that uh, every person is mortal, Ahmad is a person, therefore Ahmad is mortal. Okay, so how can we present this in a uh, propositional logic? Okay, and how can we derive that uh, from the first and second sentence? We can conclude that Ahmad is a person, therefore Ahmad is also mortal. So, to overcome this problem of the generalization problem, we have predicate logic. Okay, uh, because propositional logic, again, it combines atom. And atom contains no propositional connectives. Okay, and have no structure because the whole sentence is one uh, um, variables. Okay, today is wet. John likes apples. So, if John likes apples, John likes orange, John likes grapes. So, you have three sentences there. Okay, uh, so predicate logic allows us to talk about objects. So they have properties, relation, and if it's true or false. Okay, for example, uh, the relation is is wet, and the object is today. So today is wet. Relationship that you have two objects inside. So the first object likes the second object because the relationship is like. So John likes apples. So you can have more object here. Okay, so John likes apples, orange, grapes, and etc, etc. And we can also have true and false as in a propositional logic. Okay, so when we go back to the uh, example in predicate logic, we have to create a propositional symbol to stand for all part of its sentence. Okay, so P is a person, Q is a motor, and R is Ahmad. So we don't uh, represent the whole sentence. Okay, not uh, every person. Okay, is mortal. Ahmad is a person. Okay. So the above three sentences are represented as P then Q, R then P, and R then Q in propositional logic. So although the third sentence is entailed by the first two, okay, so we need an explicit symbol R to represent Ahmad. Okay. Alright, so that's why we have we use predicate logic whereby we can generalize the idea every person. Okay, and then we can say Ahmad is a subset of a person. Okay, so uh, that is all for propositional logic and the predicate logic. So the next video lecture is about the first order logic. Okay, thank you.